Good day, grade 10 students. Welcome to the new discussions on logarithm and exponential functions. This is about solving exponential and logarithmic equations. The first part of the video is for the discussions on how to solve the exponential equations and the other would be for solving logarithmic equations. First, exponential equation. This is an equation with unknown indices. 3 raised to x equals 27 and 4 raised to x plus 1 equals 6 raised to 2x minus 3 are examples of exponential equations. Specifically, 3 raised to x equals 27 is an example of one-sided exponential equation while 4 raised to x plus 1 equals 6 raised to 2x minus 3 is equal is an example of two-sided exponential equation. I am emphasizing this because the way you solve one-sided exponential equation is somehow different from um, two-sided exponential equations. Exponential equations can be solved by either of these two methods. First, if both sides of an exponential equation can be expressed as same base, we can use the, this property below. If a raised to x equals a raised to y, where a is greater than 0 and not equal to 1, then we can say that x is equal to y. This is for a two-sided exponential equation. Second method, if an exponential expression cannot be expressed as the same base, then take logarithms of both sides of the expression and solve. These two methods can be summarized actually into this. When the given is one-sided exponential, then we use method 2. But if the given is a two-sided exponential equation, then we use method 1. Let's go through with these examples. Solve for x in the expression 6 raised to x equals 9. In this problem, this is method 2 since this is a one-sided exponential equation. I will be presenting here two methods how to solve this. First is by using the definition of logarithms. Then the second is using the property of method 2. Okay, first we all know that by definition of logarithms, if p raised to x equals y, we can express this in log as log of y to the base of b equals x. So using this, the base 6 would be base of log, x will be transposed to the other side as independent, then 9 will be now your log. So having this, it will be now log of 9 to the base of 6 equals x, making log 9 base 6 our answer. Another method is, of course, using the method 2. Method 2 states that you have to take the log of both sides. So from this given, it will be now log 6 raised to x power equals log 9. See, both sides should be in log. Using property 5, we all know that the exponent becomes now your coefficient, making this x log 6 equals log 9. Divide both sides by log 6. This will be cancelled, leaving only x. Now using property 6 in the other side, log 9 over log 6 will be now log 9 to the base of 6, which is the same as our previous answer. So you see, either you use the definition of log or you use the property of method so still you will arrive with the same answer. Let's have this second example. Solve for x in the expression 4 raised to 2x equals 15. So I am going to use here property of method 2 wherein you have to take the log of both sides. So from the given 4 raised to 2x equals 15, it will be now log 4 raised to 2x equals log 15. So before using property 5, here in the left side, 
you have to evaluate first 4 to the second power. So from here, it will be now log 16 to the x power equals log 15. That's the only time you can now apply property 5 since x now here is alone. So this will be now x log 16 equals log 15. We're solving for x, so, we're sa so we will divide this both side by log 16. So your answer now here is x equals log 15 to the base of 16. Let's have an example of a two-sided logarithms and apply property of method 1. Solve for x in the expression 5 raised to x plus 1 equals 3 raised to 3 minus x. Applying the property of method 1, we can take the log of both sides. So from the given, it will be log 5 raised to x plus 1 equals log 3 raised to 3 minus x. So applying property 5 in laws of logarithms, from your exponent, it will be now your coefficients. So this will be the quantity of x plus 1 times log 5 equals the quantity of 3 minus x times log 3. Applying distributive property, it will be x log 5 plus log 5. Remember, when you multiply x by log 5, it's not log 5x. It should be x log 5 because you're multiplying here the coefficients of log and the x, not the constant of the log. Equals 3 log 3 minus x log 3. So here, you have to isolate now all terms with x. So, you have to transpose terms with x and also terms without x. So your negative x log 3 here will be transposed to the left side while log 5 will be transposed to the other side. So this will be now x log 5 plus x log 3 equals 3 log 3 minus log 5. Since we're solving for x, here in the left side, you have to factor here x from both terms. So factoring this out, it will be x, x times the quantity of log 5 plus log 3 equals log 27 minus log 5. The 3 log 3 becomes log 27, applying like the reverse property of log 5. 3 becomes the exponent of 3, making it 3 raised to the third power, which is equal to 27. So that's, that's why it is now log 27. So you have to combine now log 5 plus log 3. Since the operation here is plus in between of log 5 and log 3, the applicable property here is property 3. Multiplying 5 and 3, it is now x log 15. While the other side, log 27 minus log 5, since the operation here is difference, we have to make use of property 4. So combining these two, it will be now log 27 over 5. Now we have here x log 15 equals log 27. Divide both sides by log 15. We have now your final answer which is log 27 over 5 to the base of 15, applying the change of base or property number 6. So that's how you solve exponential equations using logarithms. More examples are in your module. Next, let's have logarithmic equations. An equation which contains logarithms of some unknown variables is called logarithmic equation. Log of x equals 36 and log of x plus 1 to the base of 2 equals 7 are examples of logarithmic equations. Specifically class, these two are, are examples of one-sided logarithms. Yes, we also have here one-sided and two-sided logarithmic equations. Logarithmic equations can be solved by either of these two methods. One, if both sides of the equations have logarithms, 
then we can use this property below. If log of m to the base of a equals log of n to the base of a, then we can say that m is just equal to n. Then the second property deals with one-sided logarithms. If it's a one-sided logarithm class, you use the definition of logarithm to solve. That is, log of m to the base of a is equal to n is just equal to a raised to n is equal to m. Let's have these examples in solving logarithmic equations using um, exponential properties. Solve for x in the expression log of x plus 1 to the base of 3 equals 2. We'll use here method 2 since this is a one-sided logarithmic equations. By definition of log, 3 will be the base, 2 will be the exponent, while x plus 1 will be transposed to the other side. So this will be 3 squared equals x plus 1. Evaluating 3 squared, it becomes now 9 equals x plus 1. Transpose the constant to the other side, it will be 9 minus 1 equals x. Then, then 9 minus 1 is equal to 8. So x is equal now to 8. You have to check your answer for extraneous roots. Let's use the given log x plus 1 to the base of 3 equals 2. And let's check 8 if that is really the answer by substituting, by substituting it to the x. So this will be log 8 plus 1 to the base of 3 is equal to 2. Then it will be now log 9 to the base of 3 is equal to we all know that we can write this in exponential, so this will be 3 squared is equal to 9. And we all know that 3 squared is equal to 9, making this one the correct answer or value of x. Another example. Solve for x in the expression log of x plus 2 minus log of x plus 1 equals log 3. This time, this is already a two-sided log since right and left side, they have logarithms. So with this, we'll use method 1 by having this property. If log of m to the base of a equals log of n to the base of a, then we can say that m is equal to n. So let's deal first with um, the left side. We have here... Um, two terms, log of x plus 2 minus log of x plus 1. Before we use the property of method 1 class, let's make sure first that both terms are single logarithms. So the left side, for us to make this single log, since the operation in between is minus, we'll use property 4. So having this, it will be log of x plus 2 all over x plus 1 since the operation is subtraction. So for us to make it single logarithm, it will be um, expressed in fraction form. So it will be log of x plus 2 over x plus 1 equals log 3. Now that we express this both side in um, single logarithms, we can now cancel the log, leaving only x plus 2 all over x plus 1 equals 3. Then cross multiply it will be 3 times the quantity of x plus 1 equals x plus 2. Applying distributive property, it will be now 3x plus 3 equals x plus 2. Now, transpose x to the other side, also the 3. It will be 3x minus x equals 2 minus 3. 3x minus x is 2x, then 2 minus 3 is negative 1, divide both sides by 2, x is now is equal to negative 1 half. Since this one is negative, I want you to attend to my synchronous class to know my emphasis here if your x is negative. Let's have this last example. Solve for x in the expression log of x squared equals 2. 
since this is a single log, we can use the property or the definition of logarithms. So this will be now, since the base of this of the given is 10, so it will be 10 squared equals x squared. We all know that we can extract the roots by getting the square root. So this will be square root of 10 squared equals square root of x squared. Getting the roots of 10 squared, it is 10, and getting the square root of x squared, it is x. So x is equal to 10, giving our value of x.